Minasan konnichiwa yorobun annyeong. Hi everyone, this is Leo for Asia On Air. And it's weekly breaking news in which I gather all the K-music and J-music news that caught my attention during the week. In today's update, I'll touch a word on the financial hardship of Luna and on much better and brighter news concerning the comebacks and the major debut of legend artists that I love so much. Let's jump right into it. It has been 40 years, 40 years since the debut of Seiko Matsuda, one of the most legendary Japanese female singers from the 80s. And to celebrate that, Seiko announced on September the 21st an anniversary album to be released on October the 20th under Universal Music. Called Seiko Matsuda 2021, it's gonna include self covers of her best hits and more recent songs. Honestly, when I see how fresh and beautiful she looks today, I still cannot believe that she's about to turn 60 years old soon. And I really admire the endless energy she has to release a new album and even a music video. <laughs> Be aware that I will very soon post a review video for the song called Sweet Memories by Seiko Matsuda on my channel to talk a bit further about her, so stay tuned. We stay in the love for Japan's Showa era since I want to talk about Night Tempo, the Korean famous remixer of numerous Japanese city pop songs from the 80s. On September the 29th, Night Tempo posted a very classy picture on Instagram stating that he's about to at last release his very first major single on the coming week, so in early October. Well, first I love his style in this picture with the long jacket, the necktie and him holding a cassette player, that's accurately retro. And then, well, as I told you two weeks ago, it seems that city pop is becoming mainstream and that makes me so proud of him. No more info yet on his major debut, but we'll soon know more about it. We now switch to a more contemporary style, which is metal, or kawaii metal with baby metal, who just released on September the 29th the live record of their performances that took place from January to April of this year at the Nippon Budokan for their 10 years anniversary. It's called 10 years baby metal Budokan and you can now enjoy it as a CD, vinyl, DVD or Blu-ray along with new merch made for the occasion if you go to their dedicated shop aka the Babynet Dadada. -da -da. Now their following step is to broadcast a live viewing of this record in various Japanese cinemas between the 1st and the 5th of October until the new chapter or legend of their career finally opens on October the 10th. If you want to know more about Baby Metal or even if you are already a fan, I invite you to take a look at the full retrospective video that I released today about the group available on my website. And we move to Korea with Hwasa from Mamamoo whose label RBW confirmed on September the 29th that she was preparing for her upcoming solo album. No more details yet on her comeback, which comes a bit more than a year after her refined Maria. Meanwhile, I invite you to check out the new song Hula Hoops by DPR Live, in which Hwasa features her sexy and warm voice. Hula Hoop without the S this time is also the title of the truly addictive song recently released by the Korean girl group Luna for their Japanese debut. And so much into this song, even though I got a bit disappointed by by their supposedly city pop version, which actually isn't really city pop. Anyway, Luna is in big trouble, financial troubles. Their agency Blockberry Creative, a sub-company of Polaris, as the Korean news outlet Sports World reported on September the 28th, still haven't paid their due wages to several external companies and employees they have been working with. The overall due amount is about the equivalent of 85,000 US dollars, 
which is pretty huge and some of Luna's fans got so worried about this situation that they begged on Twitter Elon Musk aka the wealthiest man in the world to help saving their favorite girl group. Now, why Elon Musk precisely? Well, first because he's rich and also because he's kind of ex-wife uh, with whom he's not really separated with yet. Grimes, 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 I'm not sure how to say it, uh, did work with Luna for their song Love Forever. <laughs> Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? It's always worth a try. In any case, this news is raising serious questions on the working ethics of Blockberry Creative, because it seems that some of the hair and makeup artists and stylists who have been working for Luna have been enduring personal financial hardships for months without being paid until in the end being notified to quit working in a pressuring manner. Knowing that, I seriously doubt that anyone or any company would feel enthusiastic to work with Blockberry Creative in the future, which in the end will unfortunately cause harm to Luna as well. It looks like we have here the perfect picture of a company whose ambitions went above its financial capacity. Let's hope all of this gets solved fast, first for the rights of the external employees and then for the sake of Luna's future. That was it for today guys. I'll see you on Monday for a music video reaction. Until then, subscribe. Crap.